Joining us on the How Did You Podcast today is he, an absolutely talented music artist who has his own studio and practically is an outstanding creative. How are you doing today? I'm all good, man. What about yourself? I'm not doing too bad, thank you. Obviously, in the introduction, I mentioned that you're an outstanding music artist. You've recently been featured on BBC Radio 1 Introducing. How did you find that? Because you've had a new song that was out recently. I was very fortunate to be put on that because the guy who I featured with is an artist called Kibuki, who I've known since I started music and we're very good friends. So really, yeah, do you know what? I'm just going to put all praise on him. Like he's the reason all of that happened. It's nothing to do with me. He's just amazing and I love him for putting me on. You've had your own songs that have been released. If I had to ask you to pick a favourite, which one would it be? Oh, so it's... At, at this very current, in t- well, at this very moment in time, I'm split because... I really like these unreleased songs from Escape the Box. I really like them. But if it has to be a project that I'm digging at the moment that is out, I love uh, the Future Nostalgia EP, the rap EP that I just put out. I find that when I listen to that, I'm I'm transported back to my childhood and I feel like I'm rapping in SP Studios where I started honing my craft. And I'm just like, bro... It's it's been too long. I'm so glad that I got that out of my system. So yeah, that future nostalgia will be my favorite project for now for my own personal stuff. But yeah, the Escape the Box stuff that is unreleased, I'm enjoying that a lot more than that project. <laughs> but obviously, no one can check that out yet. <laughs> I don't even know if the names of what they're called is going to be it. <laughs> it could all change last minute. <laughs> I can completely understand that because your mind works it multiple miles per hour like mine probably does because you're a creative you always got these ideas like you want to happen like you say we were discussing about cameras the other day and it's mind-blowing how much they've come on but if we were to throw it back and talk about how things have come on since you first started music back at Mm. the age 12 did you ever see it coming to the point where you are today no man but the landscape is it's changed so much like put this what youtube was in its infancy as well when I started there was no such thing as Spotify like I remember I remember when Spotify first became a thing and I was still sitting there thinking do I need to be on this bro I'm even going back to MySpace would have been like (laughs) LimeWire yeah yeah, (laughs) literally like that's that's how long I, I don't even think I knew the impact of social media until my brother actually made me a Facebook in in 2009 I believe the page isn't isn't actually even there anymore I've made another one since but yeah seeing that and realizing how connected everything was at that point it's it's hard man I I don't think anybody really at that time realized the impact I think it's only now and in the past few years that maybe music artists have really deep oh my god this is this is here forever if we'd have knew the impact that it was going to have have from those early days then it might be a totally different story but i guess that is the life of a creative we're always having to adapt to new ways of thinking new ideas and ways to maneuver in this crazy wicked world (laughs) it's quite funny you mention adapting in this crazy wicked world to be fair because you've now in the past six months or so built your own studio to the point where people come and record music with you how have you found that because whilst we were speaking before this really started in a recording you said this is like the most music or most stuff that you've made through your past 15 years yes it's it is it's insane like even trying to put it in a sentence it's one of the most rewarding things because you get to help people on all different parts of their journey and I don't even mean to talk down or say it in a bad way but a lot of the people that come to record with me I've I've been in that space already I know exactly what they're going through that like even the changes and you can see that they're trying to find themselves as artists and it's very re- rewarding for them to allow you to have full control of that like I had a session yesterday um, with an artist and he actually featured on his EP it's his first one that's coming out um, and I love it when I'm sitting there mixing his songs and he, d- he doesn't even care about the input it just allow me to do whatever I want so if I'm just you know, I'm feeling weird. I'm just going to chuck some distortions on here. I'm going to do like a random sort of thing in the mix. Like he doesn't care. Not that he doesn't care. That's the wrong word. He allows full trust 
in me to do whatever I want. And I, f I find that, yeah, it's, it's very rewarding. I love it to death. Although, I guess it's, it's not where I saw myself going. That's the only thing. I didn't see myself in the studio being an engineer and being a, well, a producer. It just kind of happened. And I, I think that's the adaption. It's just, yep, yeah, this feels right. Let's go do it. <laughs> and so I would say so far, it's been very successful. I bet that kind of helps you, though, because with the fact that you're learning from other people's music, you can apply that to your own music. Like Escape the Box has got songs coming out, like you say. You can use that creativity from what you've learned from other people because realistically, we all have to learn off each other and we have to develop with each other because that's how we learn things, right? 100%. It's, um, it's a very influential space, 100%. You can hear, I guess that's the beauty of, of right at the start and the infancy of your creativity, anything is go. There, there are no rights and wrongs. I remember working with a producer back in the day who said, like, he has a rule book of things that he follows. But when I come into the studio, I tear out the pages in the rule book, screw them up and throw them away. And it's just like, it, it allows him to see the forest through the trees with things. And I guess, yeah, it's, it's a constant refresh it it's a constant yeah like a breath of fresh air every time someone comes in and says oh yes do this and a lot of the music as well that um people bring in i guess i've even never recorded before or i guess the style just wouldn't really be something that i would do myself but then as you start mixing it and listening you go oh okay hey i could do that <laughs> let's let's give it a go i think a, a large part of that rap ep um, was probably due to my clients coming in. Just I probably did a lot of rap stuff that month. I've always it would it's been brewing in the back of my mind anyway for like maybe about eight or nine months to go yeah let's let's give this a go. Um, but yeah, I would say it's definitely attributed to recording a lot of rap. That's made me want to go do that EP. So yeah, def it's definitely influential. Hundred percent. Sorry to go around the houses. <laughs> <laughs> My brain was actually. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it's absolutely not an issue. But if we were to think about it, really, I've just quickly looked at your Spotify. You have people that listen to you monthly, and it's not a low number. It's quite a considerable number. How does that feel? Um, I don't think about it too much. Like, if I start to obsess over it and I see the number drop, I start to feel like, damn, man, mm. I'm not doing good enough. I, I feel like. I feel like you've just, as a music artist, you've got to fall in love with the creativity, put your heart and soul in, put it out, and not forget about it per se. Promote it and do your do your thing, but uh, yeah, just don't worry about it too much. Like leave leave that to the professionals. <laughs> I just find it pretty crazy that some of them are from like Buffalo, New York, or whatever, as an oh. artist from England. I think you have to take it with a pinch of salt because. I guess you get put in a playlist. Someone else's playlist might have a lot of listeners from somewhere else. You then get them listeners. Like that's, I just take it all with a pinch of salt. If I see a lot of uh, numbers in the UK, then I, f I feel like, yeah, okay, cool. And it's, to me, I guess, like with the last release with uh, Bookie um, doing the Let It Ring song, um, the day of that release, I was inundated with messages from people from America. Like, all saying, yo, yo, man, this this is dope, bro. Like, oh, my God, man, I'm playing this on my night shift, bro. And it's, it's just like, oh, that's that's cool. And then I guess I guess that then reflects what you see on Spotify. But, yeah, it's, um, I think it's just, bro, music's just so connected. Like, it's weird. Even when I think, um, say I get a 1,000 views on a song, I always just try and equate it. Could I fit a 1,000 people in my house? No, <laughs> I could never fit a thousand. Maybe a tight squeeze. We'd all be like boxed up against the wall, but comfortably, yeah. It just they're insane numbers, man. Even two hundred people. Like when we was doing the um, what is it? The shows in uh, Birmingham. Like imagine three hundred people in that room. That is packed. That's a packed show. Like I'd love to even perform to fifty people. Is a lot of people. So yeah, it's numbers on the internet. I guess because it's not physically there and you can't touch it. It's um, yeah, it's. It's hard to get lost in it and go, oh, wow, it's a million people. Wow, I only got a thousand views on my song. Bro, do you know I'm, a thousand people is a lot of people. It is <laughs> go, a lot of people. Go try have a thousand conversations in one day. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Whilst we're on the topic of people, mm. do you ever, in the situation and the position that you are in, face imposter syndrome? Oh, I don't think about it. But my um, my brother said this the other day. He has it when he edits videos. 
but I I don't think I faced it um, myself. No, I maybe when it, maybe at the start, but now this is just normal life. <laughs> this is just I've I've gone against everything to do this, man. I've I've had my moments of no food in the fridge, and like really struggled and felt it. I'm just I'm just happy now. I'm really happy with everything. <laughs> I bet that was a bit of a struggle, but now that you've built your career, you've got your own studio, you're buying swanky cameras, which I want to steal. <laughs> I'm so annoyed the R5 didn't uh, go in there today because I, I should have charged that. That's my bad. <laughs> Just because you record, make music, it doesn't mean that the recordings that you do is the exact music that you listen to. So what music do you listen to? I'd say a large portion of the music I listen to Currently, I know it's going to sound really weird, but I've listened to a lot of Afro beats. Yeah, it's very weird. I and mean, that's, that's so strange because I guess I go through I go through phases of what I like. And again, that's that's probably attributed to the clientele that I record. I guess what, whatever is the favorite flavor of that month of the people mm. when they're coming in, I have to immerse myself in it and just listen on how I can improve um, my skill set when they come in. But yeah it's it definitely falls in between alternative rock and then whatever is coming in from everywhere else i'm probably very uh what's the word i listen to myself a lot <laughs> i'm making music all the time so you're very self-critical it's you know what i would say yes man because if i make a song i listen to it to death and try to find everything wrong in it Mm -hmm. but at the same time I mean I'm just enjoying it and it's a release as well like I'd say most most people that get into music probably start it as a form of therapy to write out their emotions and feelings and that has been my coping mechanism since like 12 so yeah most times if I just am creating I'm just speaking my mind and I guess you're going to relate to yourself more than anyone but yeah yeah, it's definitely that. That would be what I'm listening to at the moment. <laughs> Without going down the rabbit hole, God, I have like five conversations in one question. <laughs> what would you say is your uh, favorite piece of music you've ever made? I, I know I've kind of asked what your favorite song is, but what was it like with the process? Because obviously, some of your songs have videos, and some of them aren't released yet. Some of them might even just be ideas in a notepad. I like. Uh, one of my favorite songs to record and the whole process um, is a track called Spare a Fault mm -hmm. um, by Escape the Box. And I love that song so much because it's got so much sentimental value in there. Um, I like that the song was recorded, or well, the guitars for the song, I believe, were recorded in the boot of a car in my nan's garage um, and the bass as well. The drums were recorded at a studio called Rogue Studios over in Wembley with a lovely engineer called uh, Alicio Garavello. Um, oh, he's he's helped me so much as well with the, the mixed stuff along the way. Um, and just the nature of the lyrics as well, just the whole process of everyone involved. Um, a lady called Rosita done all the special effects makeup for it. There's actually a scene with my guitarist sitting up against the tree holding his guts out. <laughs> We had a, a guy called James Sims who done the VFX as well. We created like a, a worm inside of my body. Um, cracked the ground as well. So we had this drone shot and also uh, I basically got the, my eyes ripped out of my face. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Oh, yeah. This is the greatest project I think ever. I've because seen Yeah, it's, uh, man, it's like a Hollywood production. It's, it's mm -hmm. basically like a, a soft horror film. But um, yeah, that, that project was uh, so fun. I look at that and that's probably something that it's weird. Yeah, I guess music artists will relate to this. When you release something that you you just do really fast, you start to see the flaws in it. And I, I can see the flaws in, in some of it still. Like there's a few shots in there that I wish that were more in focus. But it's it's something that I watch back and I'm really proud of. And I even would say I'd use that as a blueprint to say that is that is probably the standard that I'd like to take and excel from for every project going forward. But we've taken a bit of a different approach this year. We just tried to go for sheer consistency. So I believe so far this year, we've put out at this current moment in time, nine songs 
on Spotify as ETV. Um, do I think that the consistency was the best option? On one side, yes, because it, it speeds up our process. But then on the flip side, no, because I don't think that the songs had enough time to marinate with people because you're literally doing like one every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And some of them didn't have videos. Um, yeah, it, it could have been executed better, but I think it's just been a challenge. It's it's nice to push yourself sometimes and just see what will happen. And I think, um, I guess the artistry on the ETB side of stuff at the minute is just throw things at the wall and see what sticks because it's still take out the the two years that we couldn't do anything for over lockdown. We've really only been doing the band for like a couple of years. So yeah, I mean, even in that space, bro, I'm, I'm surprised we still put out music through lockdown. Like that was, that was insane. <laughs> Absolutely insane. How different are things from Escape the Box to Z? Because obviously you're a solo artist, but Escape the Box is a lot of people involved. There's a lot of talented people involved. How do you see, how much of a difference do you see, sorry? Um, I like the collaboration between it. I love it to death. I think it's amazing, especially when it goes right. Um, I feel like it's, it's a lot easier to do stuff by myself because I don't have to answer to anyone. And when you've just been working in a way for so long, like I could, I could sit here now and say, yo, let's make a song. And within two to three hours, we'd leave with something fully mixed and mastered and done. Like it would be that quick. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the band, obviously it's a different process. I've got to get guitars from Aaron first. Then I've got to write the song. Then I have to give it to Dan. He then plays drums on it. Then if we do use Steve for the bass, we've got to wait for him to get around to it. So it's, it's a long drawn out process that you can fall out of love with the concepts and the ideas if they don't get done quick enough. But um, yeah, it's, I think that that's where, oh, I posted something up today. Let me read you this quote, because I think this, this sums up the band for me as a whole. It says, slow everything down until you reach excellence. Sometimes speed is the enemy of accuracy. And I believe that yep, when I read... I completely understand that. When I read that, that was so, almost like... That's the band for me. It, it's not something that can be rushed. It's something that needs to take its time. It, it needs to be, you know, well thought out. When you've got more bodies involved, it needs more organisation, more planning... Like, we've got to take our time and care. We've got to make sure everyone's happy. And if someone falls out of love with the idea, then we need to alter that so that they can care. Because I feel like the belief, if everyone is on the same page and you wholeheartedly believe this is the best thing that we can do at this moment in time, you're going to get an amazing product. Whereas as a solo artist, you just need yourself. So it's, you know, I don't think my belief is going anywhere until I make the keys for the next song. <laughs> Then I'm like, yeah, that one was all right. I'd rather do this one. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's it's interesting though because I'd say, I'd say being in in the band, my guitarist Aaron is almost like a clone of myself, in a sense of the creativity. Um, he actually reminds me of what I was like when I was on Devu. Like, he's always making songs, like all the time. So he's, my brother described him as a microwave mill the other day, which I found quite funny, <laughs> which is really bad. But he said, like, he, he would do things really quick, but it's like, because he doesn't take his time with all of it straight away, it's like he's, it's, you know, it's just in, out, in, out, in, out with all, all of his stuff. But it, there's always a gem in there. That's the thing. For every, like, maybe two or three pieces of music he sends over to me, I'm like, that one is, is amazing and that's going to stand the test of time. And I feel in the back catalogue of the ETB stuff, we've managed to handpick out all of those gems. Until really the consistency, there's definitely a few things on Spotify that I'm not happy with, but it is what it is, man. You've got to try new things and see what happens. I can completely understand that because not everything's going to work first time. So has there ever been a time where something has gone wrong? In what sense? <laughs> I guess maybe not even the outcome you expected or say, I don't know, you've recorded a whole song and it's not been recorded. I don't know. Who knows? Hmm. I guess, yeah. I think, I think, um, oh, actually, you know what? No, yes. Every, every single thing I think we tried to do 
um, at the start as a band, it was just met with adversity every single time. Like there was always uh, bumps in the road, but I think that that actually made us quite resilient as a band. I th and actually, you know what? I think if you do have a lot of mistakes, it's not necessarily a, a negative. I mm. think I think that's all character building stuff, man. Like there's a there's a lyric uh, in the Future Nostalgia rap EP, and it says. Uh, I hit I hit the ground so many times I could count the bumps on the hard floor, and I, I'm just like, oh yeah, that that for that me hits. is just yes, yeah, every every single mistake, <laughs> but that, that makes you who you are. Life has a lot of experiences, and your life you've been through it all. But if we were to throw it back, how did you find your time at Deep View? Because that's when we really met. I think it was one of the most uh, eye-opening times ever. Uh, Divu's like a family, man. Like, I feel like, yeah, they, they take you on as an artist, but they they really do. You're, you become like their, their sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a, it's a real nice environment. I think um, as a manager, Lee will give you a lot of eye-openers. Um, doesn't sugarcoat anything it will tell you exactly how it is um and even at times you might be screaming and shouting at each other on the phone but as like a, a parent would it's all just done and forgotten after the next day you pick up the phone you go hey, how are you doing you asshole <laughs> you just carry on mm -hmm. um yeah i've i think the only thing i was disheartened about is well to be honest in reflection i guess it must have been difficult when I don't think they ha ever had an artist like me on that label. And I don't even mean that in an egotistical way, but I literally wrote, produced, recorded, and done everything myself, even down to the videos. I didn't really need any help per se. It was just, where can we put all of this stuff? And yeah. I think at the rate I was putting out music and sending him stuff, I was probably sending that guy a, a song every day. <laughs> if I wasn't doing the tour, or up and down the country, I was at my house and I was making music and I was sending it to him. And yeah, 99.9% .9 of that stuff was all on a hard drive because we just didn't know what to do with it. Some of it was probably really bad, but then on the flip side, I know there was a few gems in there. Um, I mean, he even got me some dope opportunities as well, which I was nearly writing for Craig David. That was that was dope. Um, that was a that was a that was one of them things that could have gone wrong. So imagine this. Um, I had a song that was called Want the Magic. And it was kind of based off uh, Craig Davies' song Hidden Agenda. And this was around the time he was doing his last album, not the one he's got coming now. Um, wrote the record, sent it off. And I'm in the studio at this point, like, new song, guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, really excited about it because I didn't actually write it for him. I just did it just to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, Lee sent it off to his management and whatever. They said, yeah, we love the song. Um, we'll take it. So I'm thinking, oh, that's dope. Literally within about an hour of it being confirmed, these guys have gone through my social media. with <laughs> Literally, bro, they found the video. It had, had like 30 views on it. It was a tiny clip of the song. And just because it was in the public domain, they said, no, we're not taking the song deals off. So, yeah, that that was one of them things where it just made me think, oh, OK, that's a real eye opener. You need to be a lot more, you know, serious with your stuff. I think that that was the big thing with Devu. It made, it took me from a angsty teenager attitude to just F everybody. I'm doing what I want. I don't care to maybe I actually need to think about things. <laughs> but um yeah, it just unfortunately, I think it took me the whole process of being on the label and then leaving the label to actually come to realize, oh, that's where I was going wrong with a lot of things. And I think like now I probably got everything figured out, but there's still so much more to learn. So, yeah, that, that would be the time at DV. <laughs> there's a lot to learn. Like we we've known each other for probably about five years now it would have yeah it'd been four or five years but you've had like you say lots of different tours lots of different events but if i had to ask you to pick a 
venue that is your favorite to perform at? Where would it be and what kind of sentimental value does it hold to you? Um, it, do you know what? It's not it, the most sentimental um, venue that I got to perform at was actually at the end of last year. Um, I got to stand on a, the same stage that my dad played back in the 90s. Um, wow. Yeah, he was drumming on his band. It's actually a, a Camden venue called The Fiddler's Elbow. Um, do you know what? It's not even that great. <laughs> but it was just, it was nice to be there. That that was really dope. Um, I always enjoyed the festivals, man. I, I like just seeing the large, the bigger the crowd. And it's, I guess it's quite mad, but you can really play up to it. Mm -hmm. And when you get on stage, you can just become a different person and a character and just play into it. And it doesn't matter if you're silly or you, know, you mess about or you say the wrong thing because you can you can spin it any way that you want. I just, yeah, I do miss performing. I miss performing a lot. I haven't done it as much as I, I feel like I should be. Um, even this, this year, I've literally not even bothered with shows. We've been so locked up in the studio and doing videos with um, the ETBAV stuff that... Yeah, we just not really even had the time. But hopefully next year we can change that. It can be a completely different time next year, but we're looking into the future. So what are your plans for the future? What is going to be happening with the studio? What's going to be happening with you? Ideally for the studio, I would like, I would like to actually get a complex where I can emulate the same studio. So all the same gear that people record on and just have unmanned studios as mm. well as one that I can engineer in as well. Because that way, if people have got a place where they can still record and they don't require me to be there, then it allows me more free time to go and do my own, you know, artistry. Uh, for, for Z, I would very much, I'd say I'd, I'd really want to like do a lot of songwriting and I want to do more projects. I just think that is really going to, be my therapy for all of it just it, all the things that I can't say is escape the box or things that I can't get out on my daily life or whatever that will just it will be a fixture I found it to be very healthy for me to do that I neglected it for about maybe five years and didn't do anything with anything to do with EQZ um, and yeah I would definitely say my my mental state through that was a lot different to what it is now it's since doing that everything has been going good so I feel like I need that I need that release um, but for Escape the Box I really want that to be my my forefront and focus and really take that to you know the highest heights of where it can go because I honestly believe that in the rock world there is a place for it um, even just to call it a rock band I feel like it's selling it short I just feel like it's got potential to sit and well, it's got the potential to sit in multiple places. I think it could even, we could even do chart songs. I really do believe that it's, it's got that maneuverability to go anywhere with it. It could be very digital. It could be very raw. It, could, it can be anything, and that's it's very exciting. It's a it's a proper exciting project. And actually, I think even on the times where the band don't always do stuff together, no one leaves it. So that tells me that there's something here. <laughs> There has to be something here. If no one wants to go, even over the lockdown, bro, um, that that there, that two years of almost real inconsistency, maybe six months of not doing nothing because we're all just cooped up indoors, like, and they're still in the band. That I think, I think I've got my my team there. I just need to get everyone immobilized and get a plan together and start figuring it out. But yeah, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. Fortunately, the, the studio is doing well, so that's taking up a lot of my time at the minute. But we'll get there. <laughs> if things are going well, you may as well keep them going well, right? 100%. I, I, do you know what? I, I would love it to get to the point where I wouldn't have to be uh, running the studio. Like, I really I really would love that. That would be sick, just to have a lot more free time. I feel like I'd, my, my brother would probably like to be doing the videos full time. But again, it's, it's so time consuming, man. They're, when you realise there's only 24 hours in a day and you're just trying to juggle so much, yeah, it definitely becomes an issue at times. But this is why I think we have schedules. You just got to say, right, cool. These, this first three days of my week are going to be devoted to this. These two are for that and this is for that. That's that's the next 
challenge. You should see my calendar, bro. I literally have to block out days in advance. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like Tues Tuesday and Thursday, I am having that for myself. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's the... Um, that's the price I think you have to pay when you're building a business. Like, there are no times to sleep. You are just, you're at it 24-7. But it does pay off if you um, run yourself into the ground. It really does. <laughs> As it sounds, it's true. But yeah. if, you do, if you don't mind, I want to throw it back a little bit further. Go on. Obviously, Z is a performer. And Z is somebody who has grown throughout the years. Did you have any inspirations that you'd looked up to from a while ago while you were building Z? Like you said, your dad was a performer, played in his own band. Is that somebody you look up to or is it somebody completely different? Um, I don't know. I, th I think I just like, I like pushing myself. Mm -hmm. I like just doing things that, you know, seem impossible. If I, if I say something to my best friend, if I say, I'm going to do this, it's not that he'll hit me with negativity, but he'll say, this is probably why it won't work. Yeah. And we've got a funny saying, which is actually from my brother. And he says, let me tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> and that's, that's the voice I get in my head. It's like, it must, it must just be in my blood. I think my brother's the same as well. I don't think we necessarily look up to anybody um, to say, oh, I want to be like that person. It's just, imagine what would happen if we applied ourselves. And that, that's the exciting part, seeing what's on the other side of that. You, you never truly know what's next, but <sighs> you've come a very, very long way. And you've had, like you say, times where there was nothing in the fridge. And people don't understand how much effort goes into things. And I want to know, from your point of view, what do you think is the main thing that people don't understand or respect the most about you or maybe escape the box? I think... You're really making me think. <laughs> <laughs> God, Maybe so even just as an audio engineer, however you want to take it. I think that I'm probably a lot for people to take in. I realise that you get you get specialists with certain things. So, for instance, if I just said this year I'm going to be an audio engineer. And mm -hmm. I just throw myself into that. I'll be successful at it. If I say I'm going to just do the artistry and nothing else, I'll probably be successful at it. But where I, I'm like, you know, what would happen if you applied yourself and just do every aspect of it? I'm building multiple things at one time. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes that can even be quite threatening to certain people. But then on the flip side, it can be quite confusing for other people as well. But I feel like I need to do it to showcase to people that you don't need to stick to just that one thing. We, you're, I guess even in your 20s, you're allowed to mess up and try multiple things and do whatever to figure out what is best for you. And if you happen to like multiple things, then just go do it. Like, why put any limitations on yourself? And I mean... Some might even say that, you know, doing the multiple things might hinder you in certain places. But then if it makes you happy, I think you just got to do it. And that's I think that's the the thing I can honestly say this year. I get up out of bed and I genuinely feel ready for the day. Not even, you know, and it does, as, as you said, like with no food in the fridge and. You know, all of those times, I, I'm very much reminded of that every day. It's almost like a humbling experience to go, wow, man, you really are doing something. Like, even if it feels like things are moving slow, it's still moving in, in a positive direction regardless. Um, yeah, I think I think expressing that gratitude and feeling that every morning is, is definitely a thing that keeps me going. But... I don't know, man. I'm I'm sure there's there's probably a lot of things that I'll say or do or 
put out there and it might throw people off or they they might have a a judgment on me i i don't know what people's like you know free notions are of me as an individual either i probably am uh, very confusing but i think if i confuse you then hopefully that pushes you to start understanding me and then maybe that will help you in other areas of life as well maybe you do need to just look a little deeper into things or maybe i'm just wired this way i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> I just I, hope it's a pleasurable experience when uh, when people think about me rather than, uh, oh, God, I hate that guy. <laughs> I don't want to annoy anyone, even though sometimes I feel it's right to shake it up a bit. <laughs> I'd definitely say it's because of how passionate you are about things. Because you walked into that venue, I think it would have been Queen's Hall, definitely would have been Queen's Hall, now I say it, and you could tell the passion was oozing out of you. And it's a, a, you've had a lot of circumstances where you have to adapt you have to understand what's going on otherwise things aren't going to go well and with the amount of passion that you have it shows how much drive you have as a person and it's it's honestly praiseable because you have so much stuff going on with escape the box with your own brand with the studio plus you're shooting all these videos that people understand that aren't easy but <laughs> let's this is going to sound like a therapy session but would you say you're happy? <laughs> yes, I I am because I get to wake up and do all the things that I love. Am I tired? Yes. <laughs> am I run down? Yes. Do I do I do I feel like oh some days? Yes. <laughs> everybody does. Um, yeah, everybody does. I'm I'm human, man, mm -hmm. and I and so are you, and, and all of us are, and yeah. I f I think maybe that is. Maybe that is is Z. It's just a human being. And I don't know what's more relatable than being human to human beings. So, yeah. I'm not always right. I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, I'm no, not anything perfect. Not anything special, man. I'm just like you. I've, I've got the same 24 hours in a day, and it is what it is. Like, you just, we apply them differently, and I've applied mine in this way. And it hasn't been pretty on, on the way up, but, yeah, it's... I guess, bro, even when I think, am I doing what I truly want to do? I'm not doing the thing that I started out on. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it is, it's, it's mad. It's, as I said, it's, it's, it, because it's so rewarding, it can't not make you happy. Yeah. To bring, to bring someone else's vision to life and also... I guess just make them feel comfortable. I mean, in my studio, I've got... I mean, I can't flip my camera, sadly. If I had the R5, I'd show you. But I'm sitting in a cloud. I've got bean... <laughs> I've, I've got bean bags on the floor in my studio. We've got, like... Um, it's like little... Uh, uh, what they said? The air purifier scent. So we've got that. It's like a real loungy kind of place. And I... I run, I'd say it's a professional studio, but it's not really a professional environment. And I That's think that's the best music happens. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think everyone feels so relaxed when they come in. And to be honest, it does even turn into a bit of a therapy session as well. That's what I put on the website. I mm -hmm. think I'm an audio therapist rather than an engineer. Mm -hmm. Like, because we can just talk. Like, I might have like a, a eight hour session with someone and we roll till nine o'clock just because they're telling me about what they had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah, man. My, my girlfriend said this about my record. And then we just like go down the rabbit hole. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of um, it, it, all of this stuff is just communications. That's all it is. It's, it's just one big chat. Every day is a talk, 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 talk. Um, so that's probably why I go on for like 4,000 hours. <laughs> <laughs> if we were to sum up the podcast because there's always room for a part two what is the one bit of advice that you give to somebody in life advice is always um dependent on their their current situations but if i had to give it as a an overall you gotta you gotta do what makes you happy you really do you gotta you gotta do what makes you happy, and oh, man, I watched a. Uh, I don't know if you know a dude called Jordan Peterson. He said something in a in an interview, 
that I thought was great. He said, sit, sit alone on your bed at night and ask all of the things that you're doing wrong or the things that you can improve on and you will get the answers, but um, they won't be the answers that you want to hear. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think, I think every now and then it's good just to assess and get it all out your system. Like if you can, if you can do any form of therapy, whether that is, you know, offloading in a voice note, going to the studio, talking to, you know, your friends about real tense topics, even just talking with a stranger who's not going to judge you. I think it's so important to have, have that. Just to always keep a clear mind, strive for being happy. And yeah, I think he even said that as well. Now I've said Jordan Peterson, he said that happiness is not something that you can, you can be all the time. you got to you got to do something and pray for happiness, I believe he said. And so that's the interview where he breaks down and he cries with that, that guy. I can't even remember who it is now. Yeah, I don't know, man. I've, I will probably say something, give someone advice, and then it ends up backfiring. <laughs> so, yeah, do, do whatever feels right for you in that moment. Um, as long as you're not hurting anyone or doing anything crazy, that's, that's going to be my advice. We all, we're all going to grow through what we go through. And if you make a mistake, learn from it. <laughs> that's, all, that's my advice. Terrible advice. Don't listen to me. <laughs> With that in mind, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's all good, man. I am, uh, definitely feel like a part two would be, would be great as well in answer to what you said earlier. Um, I've got a question for you as well before we do um, sign out, man. Um, what got you into this and uh, why do you love it? If you love it. Of course I love it. It's a completely different experience to anything else that I do because honestly, what I do for a day job is just sit at home, make videos for a company. And yes, there's the meeting sides that you can have, but it's the human to human interaction. When I speak to people about coming on the podcast, I say everybody's got a story no matter what that story is. Everybody's story deserves to be told. And I left university and had, what, no job. Uh, just come out of a relationship that I got cheated on. Kind of had nothing really going for me. And thought, there's only one way that you can make life yours. And that's to take chances that you've got. And if they don't exist, you can make those chances. I came out of university with a degree. But had I got anything really to show for it in my portfolio? No. Had I made contacts throughout the time of university yes could i use the daily mirror for example that i'd done and make a video with them for their social media posts yes that had seven hundred and fifty thousand views in three weeks around the euros because it's understanding what's happening in life and adapting to it because life throws multiple different things at you and you should never expect it because if you're preparing for a failure you're going to be sad you're not going to be happy but if you can be happy with everything that's around surrounding you sorry you will enjoy life because life is what you make it and it's how you let things fuel you and not fail you.